It's probably not a coincidence that just about every decent entrepreneur or businessman you hear about has a morning routine that sets them up for success. In general, I think we can agree that sustainable habits yield results. This is the same for personal finance. In this video, we will share some of the financial habits we have found helpful as well as some bad financial habits that you might want to avoid. Before we jump into the details, do note that I am not a licensed financial advisor and none of this is financial advice. We're simply presenting our research and opinions for fun and educational purposes. My day job is as a software engineer, not a psychologist. But let me try to define a habit in terms of what I understand about the human psyche. All of us have a conscious and unconscious mind. The conscious mind is used to make analytical decisions such as choosing what insurance policy to buy whereas the unconscious mind is used to perform repetitive tasks like walking. The interesting thing is, conscious decisions that are repeated enough times can become almost unconscious. And this is how we can form good habits for just about anything in life, including our finances. My wife and I have each worked for over 7 years. But I will say that for the first 5 years, we didn't have good finance habits. We were not terrible in the sense that we never got heavily into bad debt or anything extreme. But the small little bad habits added up until we came to a realization and ultimately a change in mindset. So keep in mind that when we share what we consider good habits, it comes from a place of experience and we hope that some of you can benefit from our perspective. First of all, the best habit we picked up for managing our finances is to pay off taxes, bills and credit card debt as soon as our salaries are paid. This has two benefits. We avoid paying a high interest loan an obscene 26.8% for some credit cards, your life expenses and savings are transparent, every month you can see how much is spent for your lifestyle and how much remains for savings and investment. How we set this up was to opt for monthly payments to IRAS to pay our income tax and property tax in Singapore. We prefer this over annual payments because it is easier to account for our true monthly expenditure and to synchronize with all other expenses for utility and credit card bills we set up automated payments as a fallback, but the day our salary comes in, we like to review and pay them off immediately. The key is to know your true savings rate. What percentage of your income can be saved or invested will affect when you can reach financial independence. Here's a matrix that illustrates the time required to achieve financial independence based on your savings rate. Another habit that we found helpful was to project our portfolio value for the next few years based on current savings rate and expected average returns from our investments. Knowing where we are currently at and where we are headed keeps us motivated to stay disciplined. Investing is actually neither an art nor a science, it's a discipline. In our opinion, it's much easier to make many small and good decisions over a long period of time than to rely on a single brilliant idea. Now, these habits did not come to us naturally. Along the way, we picked up some bad habits as well, and we'll share two of the major ones that you should be aware of. Our first bad habit was not considering the true cause of our decisions. The biggest mistake as a result of this was underestimating the impact of travel distances. When we first got married, we decided to save money on our HDB flat by getting a BTO which was a lot cheaper than the resale market at the time. Even though it was far away from our workplace and our parents, we downplayed the issue and assumed that the cost savings from a cheaper flat would compensate for this. This is not necessarily true if you were to consider how many times you might take a cab or eat out instead of cooking at home, the cost over the long term might be greater. So be sure to have calculated all of this. On top of this, the stress of traveling took a toll on both of us, impacting our relationship and our health. As we were able to afford a more centrally located flat, we gave up our BTO, losing most of the deposit and moved closer to both our parents and our offices. We learned that the cost of our decision was beyond money and backed out of it before it was too late. The second bad habit was being unrealistic about our budget. We had decided that we wanted to achieve financial independence by our 40s and that we would cut our combined expenses to under $1,500 per month so that it was possible. This was a mistake because at the time we were spending a lot on eating out and traveling. The budget also did not account for things like household appliances, furniture, hobbies or holidays. Even though we do not spend on these things every month, they should be averaged out and considered part of the budget. 
After feeling miserable trying to stick to this unrealistic budget for several months, we realized that we should have accounted for all our expenses, even things that we thought were one-off items, and set our goals accordingly. Interestingly, bad habits set in very quickly, while good habits require much more time to become unconscious or automatic. You might be wondering, how do you know if it's a good or bad habit? The answer is to define your goals. What does financial independence mean for you? What would your lifestyle expenses be? If a habit is sustainable and leads you towards that goal, keep doing it. If not, get rid of it. Be realistic in setting your financial goals and identify the good and bad habits in relation to those goals. Now, we love to hear your thoughts. What is your idea of a good habit for reaching your financial goals? Leave us a comment down below. If you're interested to hear more from us, subscribe to our channel to get notified every time we release a new video. Gently tap the thumbs up button for the almighty YouTube algorithm. And if you find this helpful, share this with your friends and family. We will see you in the next video.